Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo and this is Ruby Guides. If you like Ruby, make sure to subscribe to the channel now and visit my website rubyguides.com. So in this video, you're going to learn about cats. No, <laughs> you're going to learn about active storage. Active storage so you can upload cat photos or any kind of images that you want to your Reels application, okay? This case, I have this application where I have a form where a cat has a color, a name, uh, uh, an age, right? I just created this with um, a scaffold, scaffolding, which I have another video and articles about how to do scaffolding. I also use a bit, little bit of bootstrap to give it a bit of nice design, right? So that's what we have here. And in here, as you can see, there is a cat. And it says, browse. Browse, no file selected. So this one I click. I can choose the image to upload it to my site, to my Rails project, right? So how do you implement this? How do you implement this image? Um, how we can show the image, how do we upload the image, right? So this used to be hard before something uh, called active storage was added, right? And now it's easy to do, as you will learn in this video. So if I reload this page, you will see this our starting point. I just show you the, what it will look like. We have our image, we can show the image if we have an image. And if we don't have an image, you can upload a new image, right? And if you have an image and upload another image, then you will replace the other image automatically. So we're going to use something that's new since I believe um, Rails 5.2. And of course, Rails 6 also has this feature, which is called active storage. And it's really used to use, really used. Easy to use, sorry, really easy. As you will see, everything that we need to do to get started is to have a modern version of Rails, create a new Rails application. I recommend when you're trying these kind of things, start first with a new clean application because sometimes uh, you might have changed some settings or added some gem or made some kind of changes that might result into errors. But if you start with a new clean application to test a new feature, then you're going to run into less problems, right? Yeah, so this is how you get started. Once you have installed Rails, you can create some scaffolding if you want to have some something to work with. And then you do this. You do pin Rails, active storage, colon, install, right? So rels active storage colon installs. And then you run this and just press enter, very simple. And you let rels do its thing. And in this case, nothing happened because I already did this for this particular application. So what does this command do? Well, we can go into db migrate. And uh, here's where all of your migrations are. So migration is basically all of the describes the changes to your database, right? And this is what this command does. It creates this file, create active storage tables. Okay. So what's, that's what this command does. It creates this migration file, which you can take a look at if you want, like this. And this is what it is. It creates um, two tables and these tables are what we allow you to store information about your files. So this, this is what that does. It stores information about the files that you want to upload into your Rails application. Like for example, that cat photo that I show you, which by the way is from Unsplash, where you can find uh, free uh, photos for for your page. Okay, so that's the first step. You have your Rails application, you do active storage install, then you do Rails um, db migrate, right? 
I, in my case, I really run my migrations, but the, if you're following along and you this a new application, then you will have to do this. And this will update your database and prepare your database so you can use active storage. So what's the next step? Let's take a look at my code. So in this case, I have, uh, because this application is all about cats, I have a cat model, right? Makes sense. And uh, what do we need to do here? Well, just one simple thing, which is has attach image. I think this is correct. Let me check. Uh, has, no, sorry, is has one attach. And then we need to pass a symbol, which is the name of the image. We can just call this image. You can call it whatever else you want, like avatar, if this for a, like the picture of uh, someone uh, in a forum, forum site or something like that. Uh, I think image is simple enough. It doesn't need to be complicated. Uh, what this is simply the name that we're going to use to refer to this attach image. And yes, the fact that it has, it says has one, that implies that you can also have many images, okay? But for this video, I'm going to keep it to has one image. You can refer to the official documentation to find how you can adapt what you learned in this video to make it into many images, okay? So having said that, let me quickly remind you to uh, subscribe to the channel and click the like button so more people can find this video and also visit my website rubyguides.com. So let's keep going because we're not done yet. What, what have we done so far? Well, just two things. We have active storage installed, then that creates some migrations, then you migrate right, that updates the database structure, and then you add this line into the model that you want to have files attached, right? So what's the next step? Well, this, even though we, don't, we did these steps, nothing changes in your form, right? You see, there is no uh, way to for me to choose a file and upload it, and we can't see any, files here, right? So next we go to the view. In this case, I have a form partial and this created from the scaffolding. I added some classes for bootstrap. Now, if you're interested in bootstrap, I have another video where I explain it, the basics of how it works. Okay. So we need to add something in here because that's what's, what's going to show the image that we upload, it's also going to give us the option to choose an image or a file to upload to our Rails application, okay? And I already prepared this code because th there is quite a bit of HTML if you want to, for it to look a bit, a little bit good and a little bit more professional than just default no styling, right? So I have a div that is going to wrap my whole um, image thing. And this has a class of form group. This is again from Bootstrap. And then I have the important things that are relevant for this video. And that is that we're going to check if the cat, which is our model here, remember, has an image. Where is this image? Coming from where well, it's coming from here. If we name this um, potato, this would be potato, not image, right? So image is not a special method that you need to call because you're using active storage. This is like a dynamic method that gets created uh, by a meta programming using this. So all that means is that if I call this um, cat, this will look like cats, like that, right? I hope that makes sense. If I make this bacon, that will be bacon. If I make this chocolate, 
then that will be chocolate. I hope that made sense. So this method changes depending on what you write here. Next, let's move on. Um, we say cat image that gives us our image object. And we have this method. It's called attach question mark. Attach question mark. So remember, uh, question mark methods are like query. We're asking a question. It's a query. We're asking is true or false, right? Is it attach or not attach? Meaning, do we have an image here or do we, ha or, or don't? We either have an image or we don't have an image. Why do we need to check that? Because if we have an image, we probably want to show it. And to show it, we can use an image tag. And the actual image that we pass, pass, that give to, that we give to image tag is the cat image, right? So again, this image method is going to be whatever you put in here. And I have some styling used to limit the size of the image because the image by default is going to show its full width, full size of the original image. So I'm limiting the width, which we also limit the height of the image. So we don't have a gigantic cat on our page, okay? What's next? Well, label. So this label is just, so we label what the input field is. This is not required for this to work. Now what's required is this file field. So let me just zoom in in there for you. It's file underscore field. Okay. And again, what you put in here is the same here that you put in there. Okay. So if we name this image, it's going to be image, same as the method name. So all of these are like mirror. It's the same. And again, you have some CSS class to make this look a little bit nicer. And what this file field will do for you is it will allow you to choose the file that you want to upload. So this is basically your file chooser uh, field. Okay. And now if I reload the page, you will see I have this image of my cat because I, well, it's not my cat, but the cat I chosen, <laughs> the cat image that I chosen for this particular example, because I already picked one, right? And if I, I can pick the same one again, and I can click edit, and it's still the same. If I go and find some other cut like this one, then it will change, right? So that's that's how you use active storage. You see that it was very little work. Most of the work was actually doing the uh, the form, right? So this browse button comes from the file field, right? Make sure you spell this right. And the actual image is this image tag, right? So there is that. Again, it's very easy to do. So I recommend that you give this a try. And of course, if you go to one of the cuts that don't have an image, it looks like this. There is no image, but we can click and choose one image to upload it in and then we will have the image showing. So that's it. So you can see it's very easy to use active storage in your own applications. I hope you give this a try and build some interesting applications or at least practice. It doesn't have to be super um, fancy or, or perfect or anything like that. You can just do this to practice. You can build applications just to practice a particular feature or a particular um, thing that you want to try. Okay, so there is that. So I hope you found this helpful and interesting. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like it and some more people can find and benefit 
from this video. Um, if you want to learn more, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the subscribe, uh, the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get more videos like this. Watch more videos right now on this channel. There are many, many videos where you can learn about Ruby, you can learn about Rails, and I also have some learning tips in there on how to become a professional Ruby developer. So make sure to watch these videos if you're interested in that. And finally, make sure to visit my website, rubyguides.com, rubyguides.com. In there, you will find my newsletter, my Ruby book, which helps support these videos and this content. And it also helps you become a better Ruby developer. Thanks all for watching. I will see you in the next video.